Hey guys, I'm Jim. I edit photos. Thanks for stopping by. I uh, just wanted to do kind of a follow-up video to my video from the other day about the Luminar Neo announcement. And I thought I'd do kind of a Q&A. To be honest, I have a lot more Qs than I have As, uh, just to be clear. I've uh, been on a large affiliate group Zoom briefing thing with the uh, Luminar folks. I've been on multiple individual calls with a number of folks in their organization. And, uh, you know, I've, I feel like I know a lot about what's coming and yet I still have a lot of questions. So I expect you have questions too. Some of the things I can't answer, some I don't know the answer to, or I have an idea, but I, I probably can't really talk about it simply because um, um, some things aren't announced, right? So what I will say is that my video, um, you know, lots of comments as you can see here, which I really appreciate. I love interacting with this community. Honestly, it's a labor of love for me. It's a lot of fun. Uh, a number of you did uh, purchase the pre-order and use my link, which I'm eternally grateful for, honestly. It's... Um, it's, uh, I, I'm just very grateful, just to be honest. So thank you for that. And a number of you also joined my newsletter on my website. Both of those links are down below if you're interested, and if you're not, that's totally cool. Um, generally speaking, in the comments, there's a lot of interest and a lot of um, curiosity around this product. Some folks are not as happy. Totally get that, and guess what? Um, if you disagree with me and you wanna offer you know, your opinion and it's not the same as mine, I'm fine with that in the comments. I, I don't mind having a banter or a discussion as long as we're civil, right? Um, it's just when people get a little angry and use you know, bad words or call people names that I'm not gonna put up with it. So in other words, thank you for watching. And if you're engaging with me in a professional way, good or bad, I'm totally cool with that. I love that. Um, because we're all adults here, and honestly, I think we all, we're all we all the same, right? We just want to take good photos or take average photos sometimes and make them better, right? And I'm here because I just like making videos about editing photos, and um, I'm just going to keep doing it, and I just love interacting with the community. So thank you for that. Thank you for the support. Um, and, and the reason I point, put this, uh, this uh, screen up is simply because I've had a lot of comments. It's fun to interact with you all, but I haven't gotten to them all. I'm going to try, but it's, uh, it's difficult to do. The pre-order period, as you know, is going on, and you know I'm not going to belabor that. You get it. Uh, they've sold through quite a chunk of them already. There's 30,000 that are in the early bird pre-order period, which allows you to get this best price, and uh, they're already under 20,000. And so it's it's you know it's ticking down pretty uh, significantly, I think. Um, there are some comments about pricing. Some people think this app should be free or that it's too expensive, and you know, if that's your opinion, that's fine. We are just going to disagree on that. I think $34, if you're an existing customer of any Skyloom app, $34 is very inexpensive, uh, certainly in American dollar terms. I mean, lots of people would go out and buy pizza and a beer and spend $34 or, you know, take the family to get some tacos and spend more than $34. And so, and that stuff is over like that, whereas this is a product you're going to have for, you know, at least a year, you know, who knows what, what the future holds. But my opinion is it's a very inexpensive price of entry. But, you know, if you don't feel that way, I totally get it. That's fine. To each his own. Um, but I had people saying it's cheaper just to go to Adobe or stay with Adobe and pay their subscription fee. And it's not. Even if you're a brand new customer, $54 to get a, a copy for one seat, which is one computer, is less than half of what you're going to pay in American dollar terms for a year of Adobe. Adobe is basic, and I pay the Adobe thing. I have the Photoshop uh, Lightroom bundle, 10 bucks a month times 12 months, $120 a year. Year in, year out, $120. $54 is less than half of that. And in my opinion, I think this stuff is way more powerful than Lightroom, certainly, um, and way easier than Photoshop. Uh, my opinion, again, feel free to disagree. Okay, let's talk about the product. What is it? A lot of people are saying this should just be Luminar 5 or this should be, you know, Luminar AI version 2 or whatever, but it's it's two different things and they took the best ideas in both of them and they built a new engine and I know the library is not compatible and that's a drag and I, I told that to him. I was like, you got to make things stable and consistent for your users because people aren't happy about that. I don't work for them. I can't make it happen. I don't design products. I'm just giving feedback, but in terms of what this product is and is going to be, they took the best parts of Luminar 4, which in my opinion is layers, the ability to reuse tools multiple times, and they took the best parts of Luminar AI, which for me are, as the name implies, all the AI tools, so sky replacement and all that kind of stuff, structure AI, all the portrait AI stuff, and they mushed it together, they built a new engine, and they're adding more to it, and for $34, or if you're a new customer, $54, you get Luminar Neo. So to me, Luminar Neo is, you could call it Luminar 5 AI. 
That's kind of how I think of it. It's the best of L Luminar 4, but better. So that would make it kind of Luminar 5-ish. And it's the best of Luminar AI, but better. And that would be kind of the AI part. So I think of Neo as kind of like Luminar 5 AI. That's not what they call it. Some people say, call it Luminar Pro. It's not, the name is Luminar Neo, but my head is best of four plus best of AI equals five AI. Just a way to think about it. Um, I went through this slide in the previous uh, presentation or video, whatever you want to call it. I just wanted to highlight the stuff that's coming because I, I think this is really cool stuff and I think you're going to be excited about it. And based on the comments in that last video, a lot of you are really excited about this. AI-driven compositing, AI-driven masking. I mean, that's just cool stuff. And if they expose the mask to us, like they do with Portrait Bokeh AI already and Luminar AI, you're going to just get some really cool creative options and a lot of great control. Um, AI removal of power lines, AI removal of dust spots. As I said in the previous video, that's a $34 feature. I would pay that because I don't know how many photos I have. I'm sure you have quite a few as well. Well, you just got junk in there and you're like, I don't want the junk in there. And sometimes getting rid of that junk just takes a while. If they do it automatically, even if it's a 80%, it gets 80% of amount automatically, great. Like that's a huge time savings for someone like me. AI driven relighting, it's gonna be human wear. It's just gonna have to be because they're they're gonna be, I think, using their depth mapping technology and they're gonna recognize humans. I mean, they already have that to some extent in the face AI stuff in Luminar AI where you can relight a face. So it's it has to be human wear. It just makes sense to me. I don't know, they're not telling me that. So just to be clear, this video is Jim offering opinions. This is not Jim telling you everything about the product. Portrait background replacement, all that stuff. We talked about it. There's a Q&A on their website. I recommend you go read it. I think there's a lot of cool stuff in there. I've taken a few excerpts and shared them with you here. And what I wanted to talk about here is this one is like, what is Neo? And I've already talked about what it is. But it says here, it's a new technology developed that works on a module system. That's their new engine based on a module system. I don't know what module means to you, but it has certain connotations to me that I'm not really going to get into. But I think that's interesting, and I think that's very cool. And that is not what Luminar AI had. So some people are like, well, why do you have to get rid of AI and go to Neo? Well, they're not get ridding, getting rid of AI. It's still going to be here. But Neo is a new engine because it's going to give us more stuff. And it says, thanks to this independent modules engine, it'll be updated more frequently, more flexible editing process, less memory required to edit photos. These are things that people were asking for, and I think we're getting them. Now, is there a little bit of a, you know pain perhaps in the transition because your library doesn't move over? It is, okay? It's a pain for me. I've got 180,000 photos in my Luminar AI library. I'm right there with you. It's not my ideal move, but for me, the, the uh, what do you call it? The cost benefit ratio, the cost is some pain, but the benefit is all this cool stuff and this new engine, it sounds cool. I haven't seen it. I expect to get the product uh, you know, maybe in a month. I'm not sure. I think I'll get it in October, but the dates aren't clear. But whenever I do get it, trust me, and, and once I'm allowed to start sharing videos, I'll be doing that here so you can see it in action, right? Um, lots of um, optimizations and that sort of thing in the engine. Do I need Luminar Neo? Um, you know, you can read through this kind of stuff, but, um, you know, need is a very subjective word. I don't need to eat a pizza at dinner. I often want to eat a pizza for dinner. I don't need to go buy a wide angle lens that shoots at 2.8, um, but I really wanted it, so I saved up my money and I bought it. So need is subjective. Do you have to move from AI to Neo? No, you don't. Do you need to move from AI to Neo? No, you don't. Is it worth it to move from AI to Neo for $34 to get the kind of stuff that we're gonna get? I think it's worth it, and if you don't, that's your choice. Everybody, it's a free country, and there's lots of free countries around the world where you can decide this. I think the stuff that we're getting is well worth the cost of moving. Um, it also says here about creativity, drag, move, place, rotate, flip textures around the image, mask them, and blend them. We're getting a lot of power and control, which I'm excited about, and it's all layers-based, which I'm excited about. I love Luminar AI, just to be clear. I make videos every week. I don't do it just because it's not my work, right? I do this on the side. It's a labor of love. I just, um, I really like Luminar AI, and yet I wanted layers. And so now I'm getting what I've asked for, and I'm excited about it. Once again here, another 
uh, mention of this module-based engine. Overall better performance and convenience uh, allows you to apply different tools without significant performance loss. Also enjoy ample opportunities for future optimization. Updated regularly, more opportunities to incorporate new technology, right? All that sounds really good. I don't know what it means. I don't have the product, but this it just sounds good. It sounds like what I want. And again, I don't know what a module-based system means exactly, but this new engine, um, I'm willing to endure any kind of transitional challenges or pain to go from AI to Neo because this sounds cool. And you may not be like me, but I want the latest, coolest stuff to edit my photos because I like it, right? I don't need it. I want it, right? Just like the pizza and the lens. Anyway, you'll always retain complete control. It's going to have a lot of AI. You're going to be in control, just like in Luminar AI. You're not clicking a button and everything takes care of itself and you sit back and watch your photos get edited. It's not that. Um, and endless possibilities to expand layers with texts, stickers, and other vector graphic elements in future releases. So this is probably not going to be at launch, and I don't know exactly how they're going to Im implement that or what they're talking about, but being able to incorporate these kind of things just shows me that they're thinking bigger and broader, which I'm excited about. I just think it sounds really cool. So tech specs, I'm not going to dive into this. This, again, on their website, but it includes M1 support. People are asking that. It includes the M1 chip. Um, minimum 8 gig of RAM or more. Mac OS 10.13 is not supported, so just keep that in mind. And you can see down below what's happening with Windows as well. Operates as a standalone or a plugin, and it will plug into Lightroom Classic from version 6, Photoshop from 5, uh, Photos for Mac OS, and Microsoft Photos. So it will work as a plugin to those apps or as a standalone. Will third party plugins be supported? With the initial release, it's not expected to be included, it says, but because the engine enables layers, support is possible, and that says it also will pave the way for smoother integrations with other specialized plugins. I don't know if there's something different about using things as a plugin versus this module-based engine. We'll have to see what they mean by that, but I just think it's something to think about. But what I like is they know that we want plugins. If you're going to use Luminar as your home base, then you need plugins sometimes. You might want to go to some other app for uh, removing noise or adding sharpening or doing whatever. Plugins come into play. So my hope is that that is implemented and um, obviously the engine makes it capable. So that's good. Also about using it as a plugin for Roar HDR, separate apps, they're going to remain separate. But what I don't know is, is there a way to do something with Aurora HDR and Luminar Neo in the future? Um, if Luminar Neo supports plugins, Will you be able to use Aurora as a plugin from Luminar? Whereas this is asking, can you invoke Neo as a plugin for a, a Aurora? I'm looking at it the other way. Start in Neo, go to Aurora, come back to Neo. I don't know. But based on this top one here, plugins are possible. I'm hopeful. We'll find out. Who knows? Um, but that would be very good. Is it non-destructive? Yes. It's it's raw files. And it says, again, core engine organized as independent modules. Edits are stacked uh, one on top of the other with raw development being the first of them. I think this is cool. They keep talking about these this module-based engine. They've mentioned it several times in this Q&A. So that tells me not only is the new engine a big deal, but this module-based uh, uh, design of it is going to give us a lot more flexibility. But again, I don't know a whole lot about what that means. Anyway, um, it says it'll be easier for us to integrate new creative features into the product seamlessly. I, I like that idea. I want to have new functionality. I want to be able to add new tools, uh, that sort of thing. So we'll see how it goes. Let's look at a few before and after. You already know about the trans, uh, not the transition, the automatic background replacement. I wanted to look at her hair. I mean, her hair looks good there. And then you go to the next photo. I mean, even that wispy hair floating in the air, the sky behind it. I mean, that looks good if you compare those two, right? So I think that's pretty awesome. And there she is again with another different background. Again, I think the hair looks pretty cool. The air, uh, AI masking and the layers, this is just going to be a big, big fun deal for us. I just wanted to show, this is a screenshot from their website, but if you look here at this mask on this layer where it says woman, I mean, that looks a lot like the way Photoshop is set up. And that mask to me screams 
AI mask because that looks exactly like what happens when um, you use portrait bokeh AI and it isolates the subject and it shows you the mask. This looks like they're doing it just in black and white versus uh, just seeing the red on the screen. Um, in other words, you can get access to the mask here, it looks like. So that's cool. And then you've got all these different things, textures, ellipse, and you add the shape, you add the sky. Lots of cool stuff going on. This layers component, I think, is going to be super cool. Speaking of which, did you notice in this shot that the layer here for the cloud, or for the sky, I should say, is partly overlaying the front of the windowsill on the right, right here, but on the left, it's going behind that center uh, piece of wood in the window pane. So it's layered in like that. That's cool. I don't know if that's some AI masking at work. Same kind of thing down here. I just... This is gonna be cool stuff. Again, I don't know at all. Um, here it is, you know, a lower opacity on her skin here, so you can see her skin, but down on her neck, it's higher opacity, a little bit lower opacity on her back. So, you know, it's just, um, it's blending in in interesting ways, and I think that's cool because, again, that's telling me we've got creative control. We've got tools that are gonna help us do things that are hard to do, and AI masking sounds like it's gonna do a lot for us, which is great. We'll find out more. Automatic dust spot removal, you've seen that, you've seen this. I just think that's gonna be really cool. That is a huge time saver. This relight, as I said, it's gotta be human aware. I mean, here's their example photo in the bottom left, and if you look, the, the background, I mean, this is very common, right? If you're shooting in this kind of light, taking a portrait of somebody, whether it's a professional portrait or it's just a, a quick snap of someone in the family or a friend, if you look at this, I mean, the source of light is behind her. That's brighter, duh, right? And she's kind of in shadow, so her face is darker. And with this relight, and I haven't seen the tool, but I don't know, maybe it's one slider. It says it's one slider, so let's assume it is. You just drag one slider. It's calmed down the brightness and those highlights, uh, the bright parts of the background, created uh, more even uh, lighting in the photo and brightened her face significantly. So I think this is taking a lot of different things into consideration using their depth mapping. I think this is using face relight. This is using a lot of different things. And so, as I said in that previous video, I feel like they're starting to like, compound uh, the capability of some of the tools and give us more and more stuff. The, the unwanted lines is just gonna be huge. I wanted to show you this one because in the upper left is their um, pre, uh, their before photo, and this is their after photo. And if you look over here on this, um, this before photo in the upper left corner, um, in this side of it, in this right-hand side of the building, you've got several lines and shadows. And if you look over here on the after photo, you don't have any of that. So the, the shadows are gone and the lines are gone and that just, that looks really good. And if that's automatic, I'm uh, like, sign me up, give me some Neo like stat because that's a huge time saver. So I wanted to point that out because my other video, uh, I just, you know, I was in a hurry. There was so much to talk about and I feel like this video is already too long. But if you look at that before and after, that looks fantastic. And it's not just the stuff in the sky, but it's, uh, you know, coming across the building and it's also like the shadows and, and as I said. So um, I think that's it for slides. Just trying to answer some questions and share some of the Q&A that's from their website. I encourage you to go look at that and read through it yourself. But I wanted to point out some things because I've been pouring over that and trying to get smarter about what's coming because I like to make videos about it and I want to hopefully add value in my videos and share with you guys some, some things about the product as it's coming and once it's out. So I'm just trying to get up to speed just like everybody. That's my uh, video for today, friends. Just kind of a friendly Q&A about NEO. I think it looks pretty awesome. I'm excited about it. Don't hesitate to uh, leave me a comment down below. Thumbs up, like the video, that all the usual kind of stuff. You get it. I appreciate you coming by. Thanks for hanging out and uh, engaging with me and my content here on YouTube. See you soon, my friends. You guys take care. I'll see you in the next video really soon, and adios.